Hey guys, it's Vic. Can you believe it's been a month since Splatoon 3 was announced? You know, on February 17th? I, I can't either. There are so many ways that Nintendo can improve the game. I, I still can't believe it. Just as that announcement brought the community together, private battles are what we use to bring players together. The private battle system was improved immensely from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, the greatest change being that now we can have spectators in matches, which made recording games a lot easier than it was in the Wii U days. But how will Nintendo make these changes for Splatoon 3? I've got some ideas and improvements for private battle lobbies that I would like to share with you guys. Some of them will be simple and obvious, but I promise a few of them are very unique. So please enjoy! Let's get the first one out of the way quickly. We got custom room codes. Everybody wants it. But in case you don't know what I mean, a lot of Nintendo games these days, like Animal Crossing, Smash, and Pokemon, all have custom codes that you can enter to play with friends, even if you don't have them added on your Switch, while still not opening the game to anyone who just, you know, stumbles by. Imagine, no more 10 minute friends list adding times on stream. No more me having to delete everyone bit by bit. <laughs> If they're not gonna give us more friend space, they should hopefully realize that we need to still be able to play with our friends. We need to make it easier to access. God, it'd be so good, please, Nintendo, just, just do it. And next, why not let us be able to try on gear, even if we don't have it? Currently, you can get gear from other Inklings in the plaza, and also from the Nintendo Switch app. Otherwise, in the early part of the game, you have to kind of wait for the gear to be available via the in-game shop to purchase it. Imagine if all the gear was available to you, maybe with just its default main ability, and then you could just customize the subs as you please. This is the kind of customization that Nintendo would probably need a toggle option for, like turning off sub abilities in private battles. It'd mean that tournament organizers could turn this option off if they wanted players to be limited only to the gear they had unlocked in the game. The developers could easily leave out amiibo locked gear so that gear has value too and it would just be really fun. In the same line of customization, why not have a toggleable option to give a weapon any sub or special just for experimentation purposes? If the kits are limited to private battles, you wouldn't see them in ranked where they might be absolutely broken. What? Uh, do I just want a sloshing machine with burst bomb for fun? Yeah. <laughs> Next, why can't we just have more spectators in ranked? It's not impossible for spectators to DC from a lobby, because they're connected to the lobby the same way we all are via P2P connection, meaning everyone is interconnected and receiving the same data from one another. Currently, Splatoon 2 only allows for two spectators, but I don't think there'd be a problem to allow for up to eight, seeing as players are already allowed to spectate matches that aren't 4v4s. I understand why Nintendo doesn't want to allow more than 10 players in a lobby due to the way the netcode is, but what if multiple players wanted to spectate a 2v2 or a 3v3 tournament? I don't see a downside to letting the game spectate more than two people. Let's keep talking about Splatoon 2's netcode. As discovered early on by the community, the tick rate in Splatoon 2 is not as good as the one in Splatoon 1. What does this mean? Data is being transferred from player to player, right? But in Splatoon 2, it's not happening as often. This means that weapons with a very high fire rate may randomly splat a player, but from the splat ease end, it might happen very suddenly because both the shots are registered by the game simultaneously. If you've ever exploded unexpectedly, this might be why. Splatoon 3 should, if it wants to be a more competitive game, have an improved tick rate to avoid this issue. A, a lot of players would like that. All right, all right, here's another one that I know people want, a replay option. If we get a replay option, even if it was simply an automatic replay like how it works in spectator mode, it would help so many players get better at the game. Currently, most Splatoon 2 users can only get feedback if they have their own capture card to record footage, which is expensive, watch their own gameplay via 30 second switch clips, which is tedious, or find someone to coach them. By providing saveable replays in Splatoon 3, so many more players could improve at the game at a faster rate because they'd have that extra resource. And while we're trying to make the game better, here's another internet related one. So, in Salmon Run and League Battles, when the host disconnects, the game will automatically change the host and not break the lobby. However, when the host disconnects in a private battle, the game immediately ends. I'm not sure how the connection is different between private battles and the other two modes, but it seems like there should be some way to prevent private battle rooms from just exploding when the host disconnects. If the host role could be swapped to another player, 
Hopefully the game could keep going, and that'd be good for everybody. Next, another toggle function. In Splatoon 1, the end screen would show your kills and your deaths. Very simple. In Splatoon 2, the results screen now shows the number of kills you got, not including assists, as well as the number of specials used. Assuming the screen is not revamped in Splatoon 3, would there be harm in having the option to switch between both options? Some players believe having a death count is better to see their performance, but special usage and the rate of said special usage is a key part of Splatoon 2. Depending on how much specials are tweaked in Splatoon 3, and I can't really imagine them being weakened too much, players might still wish for both options. Now, these last few are pretty unlikely, but it's fun to imagine what would happen if Nintendo let us have these. So, Nintendo, come on, just, just let us have these. Consider no super jumps. That's it. That's it, just no super jumps. Imagine how different the game would be if you were just unable to super jump to your friends. It would ruin the functionality of Splashdown in this game, but maybe next game, the developers won't lock a special's most useful aspect to super jumping. Who knows? Please buff Splashdown, Nintendo. <laughs> if no one was able to super jump, it would significantly slow down the momentum of higher level play. It would be interesting to see if people just played less aggressively knowing they can't jump back into the fray in the middle of a push, or if they'd play more aggressively knowing that people wouldn't be able to come back as fast after being splatted, you know? Okay, okay, okay. The next one was brought up by Squidman and Astro if I remember correctly, so uh, thanks guys! Imagine a game mode where every single time you're splatted, you're automatically given a different, random weapon. A mode like this would allow players to experiment with weapons on the spot, and it would encourage flexible gameplay by kind of forcing players to learn how other weapons work. I think it just would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Maybe I'd get an unfortunate sudden death with a weapon I'm good at, only for it to be replaced by an E-Leader! Oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> but you might be wondering, how else can we change how the game works? Why not an option to remove the interactable objects from the stage? From the context of Splatoon 2, what if Sturgeon Shipyard lost its sponges? Or if its platforms didn't rotate? What if Camp Triggerfish's bridges never came down or its rails never worked? These bare bones, vanilla versions of the maps we know might provide a completely different experience because players would have to give up these alternative routes to travel around the map. How would you react to this situation? We could find out if Nintendo puts it in Splatoon 3. Ooh, 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 also, what if we could have no indicators of what weapons the enemy team has on top of the screen, like in Splatoon 1? Back in those days, you had to memorize what weapons were being played in the match, or else you would only find out what the enemy team had when you were fighting them. It was suspenseful and surprising, and if you didn't have a friend to tell you what the weapons were, if you forgot, uh, good luck! <laughs> I think with all these additions, private battles would be way more interesting for everyone that spends a bit too much time playing them, like, like me! <laughs> Any extra customization that Splatoon 3's development team is willing to give us will allow the game to have even greater longevity, so why not make private battles as unique as they can be? Thank you for listening. And if you liked hearing me talk about my thoughts on Splatoon 3, uh, consider subscribing for more in the future, or maybe leave a like on the video. I'd love to talk more about the game, so don't be afraid to leave topics for me to consider down in the comments below. That's all for today. See you later.